All right, finally, finally reviewing the collector. Cody told me this one was uh, was one that I needed to review. I've seen it before, but uh, I don't remember it that well. So, um, yeah, what's up, guys? Yeah, we're going to review the collector today. I am super, super... Oh, shit, what, what the hell is going on? Wh where did my lights go? What is that moving? What the? Uh, what the hell is going on? Why? Oh God! Holy shit! I can't. I can't. I think. Should I even do this? Oh fuck it! Let's just go ahead and review the collector. The Collector stars Andrea Roth, Josh Stewart, and is directed by Marcus Dunstan. The Collector is one of those movies that some might consider torture porn, and I am not a big fan of torture porn, but The Collector is a damn good movie. It's one of those, and I think every like subgenre of horror, you know, non-fans of that subgenre have a certain movie of that subgenre that they actually like, if that makes any sense. And this is one of those movies for me. It's a tough watch, but it's extremely satisfying when you come out the other end. Also, at the end of this, uh, after I finish the review, I'm going to open this for my good friends, the Horror Addicts. Uh, they actually set up this creepy crawl. It was 24 hours over the last weekend, and 24 different horror YouTubers, most of them smaller YouTubers, uh, some of them big, they they pretty much did a relay every hour they would hand off another stream and, and they would stream for an hour and it was just really cool and what they do for the horror community is just amazing and horror addicts have always been really great friends of mine gory and danny love them uh immensely so i'm looking forward to opening this after the review so in the collector josh stewart he plays arkin he's really a burglar he's a criminal but I guess he, he's a good criminal. He's one of those that's doing it to survive. You know, he doesn't want to hurt anybody. But his girlfriend slash wife, I'm not sure which she was, but uh, she owed a debt. And so in order to pay the debt, he goes and does this job at the Chase house. Uh, in this house, there is a lot of money, a lot of jewelry, and he's going to steal it. And he's wanting to get the money before the hour of midnight. But while he is in this house, all of a sudden, the collector comes in behind him, and this guy is not the guy that you want to mess with, not at all. What makes this so interesting is I love this premise where you have two criminals, really, but two completely different types of criminals. And one criminal is in the house, and he is just in the wrong place at the wrong time. But some of the other victims in the house might consider it the right place at the right time, because if not for Arkin, then they would be dead. Now, first off, I got to talk about the style of this movie, the way it is directed. It's just really dark and gritty. It almost feels like uh, an homage to movies like Seven. Seven just has that really gritty tone to it, gets completely under your skin. And the opening titles of this movie actually remind me of Seven. You have this really cool, it's almost like industrial type of music uh, over these titles that remind me of Seven. To me, those opening titles, they were just infectious. Right away, I was just completely sucked into this movie. I was like, oh, this is the type of movie that I'm going to enjoy. When you can do that with the opening titles of your movie, then you are automatically starting off on the right foot. Also, Patrick Melton and Marcus Dunstan wrote this script. Those two guys actually wrote the Halloween Return script that was canceled last year, which I thought had some really interesting elements. It wasn't perfect, but after watching The Collector... And I actually said this in my recent Halloween update. I was completely interested in where they were going to go with this movie. Um, yeah, there were some small problems. But I think from a directing standpoint, Marcus Dunstan uh, could deliver. Because he really delivered with The Collector. This is one of the most intense horror films I've seen in a long time, if ever. I remember seeing this in the theater back in 2009 when it first came out. And it was just so unsettling that I couldn't watch it again for the longest time. It's one of those few movies where I saw the value of it as soon as it was over. I was like, wow, that was a ride. That was amazing. I don't want to watch that in a week. You know, it was one of those types of films. It's an ordeal. When you are done with this movie, you are pretty much exhausted. And after watching it again, 
uh, some nine years later, it was it was a hell of a ride. When I got done with this movie, I was like, wow, man, that was so great. That was like an exercise in intensity. That's exactly what this movie was. Maybe that's the title I'll give this review, an exercise in intensity. Also, let's talk about the killer in this movie. This really is a franchise style killer. The Collector to me is one of the most memorable uh, horror villains to come along in quite a few years. And I think he's great for a few reasons. One is he's pretty mysterious. You don't know much about this guy at all. In the movie, it's revealed that he is going undercover as an exterminator in the house. But when he was in the house, he set up all these crazy booby traps. And he's extremely clever, like always one step ahead of everybody. And just to get through this house, even without him in the house, is an ordeal. And I love killers like that, that are, that are just extremely intelligent. And he's got this mask on, and you can see these little like white eyes, which is another thing. It's like, where in the hell did that come from? It's just everything about him is a question mark, and I love that. But he's such an effective killer that you never think that anybody is going to like escape his grasp. He's that frightening of a killer. And it's so cool that really the only thing we know is the title, the collector. What he does is he has this big box and he collects people, victims. Now, there's a reason why I called this movie torture porn because a lot of the, the violence in this movie is really hard to stomach, really hard to watch. I remember watching this movie in the theater and thinking, wow, this is tough. This is a really tough watch, but I couldn't look away. Because of how gripping the story was and how I was so interested in Arkin as a character and him having to save this family, especially the little girl, you know, you want him to win so bad. So no matter how bad the violence is, you can't take your eyes off the screen. That's how effective the collector is. And that's the reason why I say this is one of the few movies in the torture porn subgenre that I actually love. Most of them I don't really care about because I don't care about the characters. They're really just there for the money shot, if you will, the punchline. But this is more than that. The Collector has a good story going on. So when you get to the quote unquote punchline, it's really just an afterthought. It's still very effective though, but it works so well because you can't take your eyes off of it because you want to know what's gonna happen with these characters, and I think that's perfect. And one of the most intense scenes is when the daughter comes in, the teenager, and she is having sex with her boyfriend or about to have sex, and of course she doesn't know that the collector's in the house, but we know, and that scene is just so intense because you never know when the collector is gonna strike. He could strike at any second, and the way Marcus Dunson drags these scenes out, almost unrelentingly, and you just can't, you, like, you can't even breathe by the time uh, the kills happen. Now, as far as any cons, I guess you could say that the story is a little bit cliche. You got the, uh, the guy that owes a debt, and if he doesn't get it in a certain amount of time, then, you know, they're going to kill him. We've seen that in a million other movies, but it doesn't really get in the way of this movie. Hell, I mean, there's only so many stories that can be told in Hollywood, and they're just told in different, in different ways. So that didn't bother me at all. The ride of The Collector is just unrelenting, and I love the hell out of it. But it's not one you definitely want to jump right back on, because... It's pretty graphic. But overall, guys, I'm definitely gonna give The Collector a purchase worthy. Uh, I have not seen The Collection yet, and Cody tells me that The Collection is really good, and especially the ending, so looking forward to diving into that one. Can't wait. And now let's go ahead and do this quick unbox uh, from Gory and Danny from The Horror Addicts, my good friends. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut this open without cutting myself, hopefully. All right, we got a couple of VHS tapes here. Ooh, that is freaking awesome. Children of the Corn. Wow, I am such a huge fan of Children of the Corn. It's one of the better 80s horror movies. Um, it's creepy children, and I love horror movies with super creepy children, and this is one of the best. So thank you so much for that. And the next one that I got is Scream 3 which is perfect because I have Scream 1 and Scream 2. As a matter of fact, I'll pull them out right now. Okay, I just totally jacked up my backdrop, but there you go. There's all three Scream movies on VHS. Uh, they never did a Scream 4 on VHS, at least I don't think they did. But uh, yeah, that's cool. And it, this is like a variant cover for the first Scream. Because uh, most of them, which I have the other one too, uh, it's just the standard Scream cover, but this one is a variant, so really cool. So anyway, thank you so much, Danny and Gory. You guys are such good friends. 
and it's so good what you guys do for the horror community. It's awesome. Uh, so anyway, guys, what are your thoughts on the collector? Post below. Looking forward to hearing them. Also, I'm about to hit 10,000 subscribers, which is insane. I, I don't even want to like go in. I can't even process it at this point, but uh, I'm doing like a three-year retrospective just to thank everybody that got me to this point. Looking forward to acknowledging uh, everybody, and I've made so many friends along the way, and I could not have done it without you guys. So anyway, guys, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day. On Fridays, we do Free For All Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and now Stardust. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and Drum Dum out.